So as you know, my name is IP, so my brother TCP. <laughs> and Samsung, we have all IP solutions uh, with uh, OFDMA, new LTE technologies. So today, I would like to talk about the changes. And by change, the behavior of mobile user who primarily focus on data than voice. And another change is telecommunication and IT convergence together. But Samsung is an industry player, so we are forefront of developing telecom and IT convergence for operator. So while this change is happening, mobile operators are struggling in the hurricanes. So they have to go where? So mobile operators, they not only survive this paradigm shift, but also they create a competitive edge for long-term success. So that's why I would like to talk about innovation and Samsung technologies and our businesses together and case study. So our marketing team, we investigated how LT is faster, not, in terms of, not only in terms of speed, but also in terms of customer uptake. So first launching in WCDMA within 2.3 years, uh, WCDMA subscriber was 4.3 million. But in the same period of time after the first launch, LTE became the 20 million, now today 35 million subscribers in the world. And next year, May time frame, maybe 100 million subscribers in LTE which is much more, much faster than our expectation. Because LT is driven by demand, but while WCDMA was driven by technology with the world garden, so they cannot access to internet with open architecture, like application basis. But LT does, because five times faster than WCDMA. Also because of a smartphone, so they start to utilize a lot of different applications. And then now open services such as corporate VPN, HD voice, voiceover LTE, and music streaming services, and navigation services. So LTE is much more demanded by uh, end users these days. This world map shows the geographic uh, uh, distribution in terms of number of subscribers in LTE. The USA is 41% end users, and 27% in Korea, and 13% in Japan. So these three countries are leading LT market based on smartphone, more likely. Once they are exposed to LTE, so end users, they would not go back to 3G because of speed and application and user experiences. So these three countries phenomenon, studying these three countries, so you may find out for your future. So let me talk about Korea case because I live in there and then I experience everyday LTE. Highest wireline usage, every household consumes 33 gigabyte per month, which is the highest ranking in wireline industry. And also LTE, the more than 15% uh, population uh, subscribers, but now more than 25% within a few months. So this is quite dramatic changes in number of subscribers in LTE. So today, 12 million subscribers in September timeframe, but we estimate 17 million by the end of this year, and 34 million out of 50, 50 million population by the end of next year. So Korea is LTE wonderland, and as you see this uh, graph, LTE by technology and WCDM number, number of subscribers decreasing dramatically. So in 2013, 34 million out of 50 million population in LTE versus 17 million subscribers out of 50 million population. So 3G, so they are decreasing very fast. So no more investment in 3G equipment from our customers. So this is quite sad for Samsung. We deploy 3G and 2G in Japan as well as Korea in the US. But our revenue from 3G is zero next year. But we must expand LTE because of these dramatic changes. So user perception, 
once one operator in each country, they started deploying LTE, they launched services. So every user that using 10 megahertz bandwidth, they experience 20 megabps. But in 3G, only 3 megabps. It will change end users transition from this operator to that operator. So this fierce competition makes LTE penetration much faster. Oh, there are two buttons, I go back <laughs> always. And then 2G and 3G will decrease. Uh, between Q4 2011 and Q3 in 2012, the dramatic number of subscribers changes each technologies. LTE increased by 10 million, but WCDMA and CDMA decreased by about 9.5 million subscribers. That's why operators, they don't invest in 3G anymore. That's why LT overlay, practically in the US, in Japan, and Korea, it is a huge phenomenon you are going to see. Also, LTE in tariff is a much uh, not so competitive than 3G. So in Korea, 3G, they offer uh, $46 per month. But LTE is $55 per month. So this is representing tariff plan for each operator. Even though 3G is unlimited, still they selling uh, unlimited with the $46. But more and more users, more than 90% new subscription is in LTE, even though they limited subscription uh, with the data five gigabyte or six gigabyte. Also, we investigate the number of card type in each system in core and access. So in 3G, they need uh, 53 different types of cards. But in LTE, only takes uh, 10 different types of cards can support core and access. So which is a huge different game in CAPEX and OPEX. So LTE has much more gain than our expectation in 3G. So Korea is the fastest, com fastest country who uh, adopt new technology. But in 3G, it took four years to nationwide deployment. But in LTE, it only took one year. And then CAPEX, OPEX saving calculated by our operators, our customers. So in CAPEX, from 36% uh, to 68%, and OPEX from 42% to 63% changes. So operators, they get a lot of benefits from uh, these numbers. As an industry player, Samsung, we pr provide a lot of innovation for our customers. So world's first multi-carrier. So operator, they need not only one frequency band within 10 megahertz so FDD channel, and the other band in 1.8 gigahertz, they need uh, two bands already. So this one supports only up to peak rate of 10 megahertz, like a 75 megabps. But carry, carry aggregation will be supported in third quarter 2013 then end user and aggregate capacity will be 150 megabps within different frequency band. So tariff changes. For cellular phone, they utilized voice and more revenue from small SMS or data. But smartphone changed a lot of tariff plan. The QS voice and music and video, they charge based upon basic data uh, pipe fee, like a five gigabyte or unlimited, and they add more uh, income from end users based on each application. That's why we have to change the concept of how to design, how to design our network architecture. That's why Samsung, we designed the smart LTE networks. Because smart LTE networks cannot be necessarily designed for just cellular phone, which is a small voice and SMS and uh, voice. But smart networks is designed for a smart smartphone era. So smart networks is combination of telecommunication IT, which is a commercial blade server, which will act as a lot of different benefits to operators and the users, such as smart scheduler. So they are coordinating schedule between cells and between base stations using virtual brain of the server. And then it will be 
uh, applied for a small cache, which is mobile CDN. So many people, they can access popular contents from the server all the way down to go to a backhaul and wireline and wireless. But they just go to base station. So that base station provides one terabyte and two terabyte every one and a half years. So they doubling processing power, doubling memories. So base station does a lot of different act. And mobile cloud for storages and processing power. So that's why we designed the smart LT networks for smart phone era. How we saw this you know, design from our synergies between business units, which is a device and telecommunications, and media solution center, which provide content and new application. So this innovation time and transition time from 3G to 4G, which is very key factor to make a successful business, because a new device, introduced smartphone and new services coming up based on new architecture of uh, LTE systems. So Samsung has most optimized field proven solution than anybody else in these industries. From voice to data centric, we need more throughput. So Samsung sol challenges more and more cells and small cell and macro cell combined together and smaller cells makes a lot of interference between cells. So we provide solutions, smart scheduler, currently available today for our customers, and smart self-organizing network using IT Blade server, which will be commercialized in 2013. And this is not ideal, just a conceptual product. This is already uh, up and running in Korea. Many people talk about the smart LT network, which is a telecommunication IT convergence, but this is system all implemented uniquely by Samsung. So we got all this architectural centralized cloud RAN bases and the fiber optic backhaul. So this architecture provides much robust uh, outperform than anybody, any other vendor, leading vendor in Korea in the same region in Seoul, met Seoul metropolitan area. So blue graph shows our smart LTE network's commercial uh, performance using 10 megahertz band. And red graph shows a uh, leading vendor in the same region other competitor they provide. So this one clearly shows the Samsung superior performance. So our mobile operator has abundant fiber optic. Then who has only Ethernet backbone, how we can proceed together? So we provide a centralized uh, IT server, a backend office, and then connect to a uh, small cell and macro cell together. So this also proven in, uh, in Europe. So in the past five months, we trial hard with our one of multinational operator, uh, Deutsche Telekom. So Samsung and Deutsche Telekom, we are jointly press release today, so provide this much of performance. Using small LTE networks with the fiber, and not fiber, but uh, Ethernet backbone, it provides two times and three times in cell edge data rate. Also, handover and average throughput gain is about uh, 30%, and edge throughput gain is about 200%, which means you will have additional frequency band without paying any additional spectrum cost, because it supports much more robust capacity as well as handover performance. One of our Japanese operators, they use a small cell and macro cell combined, we call heterogeneous networks. Also, two different types of product can be adjusted with a smart LTE networks based on smart LTE server with a better performance and lower cost. At Samsung, we design another innovation we call mobile CDN, we call smart cache, we will trademark. So end user, they try to access the same contents all the way down to the server. So they must consume the wireless resource as well as wireline resource. But popular contents, they can store in the base station with IT Blade server so that end user, they can access much faster. So end user experience much better and then end mobile operator, they don't have to rely on the more capacity in the backhaul. 
So this business model will be a lot of changes. Mobile operator, so they can uh, charge some OTT player. OTT player, they have the better quality of services for subscribers in the base station. Then mobile operator, OTT player gets more subscribers. End user, they are happy to see the more quality of services from base station, not from uh, all the way down to the server. So this year, Mobile World Congress, we will demonstrate this new technology, the cloud computing in the base station, also computer processing in the base station. But these days, our smartphone cannot take care of large data and large presentation file. You cannot edit in the uh, small, uh, small devices. But you may utilize the processing power, a lot of different resources from base station, then end user device, even they are smaller, but still they can utilize a lot of modification and creation of new office program, like a PowerPoint and Word program, Excel spreadsheet. So if you come join us at our booth in MWC in February in Barcelona. So another innovation, so we created a mobile uh, VOLTE. So as a 4G world, they, uh, we got award yesterday regarding smart VOLTE. So we experienced a lot of different types of HD voice which utilize wideband AMR codec. So like, you know, both headphone in the airplane, so you may not listen to noise. So this HD voice is like that. Also switching from voice to video conferencing with only one touch button, it will change a lot of business models for operator to create, create a competitive edge. And when you are communicating in voice, so you can download music, you can uh, download content, so rich communication services through uh, voice over LTE. Also, quicker setup, it takes about only two seconds rather than eight seconds in 3G. So I will show the video. So two, uh, two people, they are communicating through uh, smartphones, and then they, uh, turn on the music from the other side, and then they can listen to music through uh, voiceable LTE and 3G. This is more likely MP3 player than just a voice call. And second video shows a video to a voice to video conferencing. Nuku, 예쁘고 머리가 길고 들어서 모르겠네. 그렇지 말고 지금 영상으로 바꿔. 어떻게 나를 몰라? Turn HD voice. 선택의 고민은 끝났어. LTE. Dawn. Dum dum da dum dum. Just one touch button, you can go to HD video with HD voice together. So much better experience. Uh, we showed this one to many CTOs and COOs from other foreign customers, so they enjoy this HD video. So this will change a lot of business models, education program and smart schools. So they listen to like a instructor from the other languages, and then with a high definition quality of video, it changed many business models. And the last one, uh, quicker setup. So there will be center, the stopwatch, and the other side, the 3G phone call, and the other one is voice, voice over LTE phone call. How long it takes to listen to ring back tone from recipient side? It's about two seconds, LTE. But in 3G, it took you know, eight seconds. So if you have this type of innovation difference between existing and new LTE operator, 
So end user choice will be uh, apparent. So yesterday, uh, we were very lucky to have a VULTE award from 4G World Appreciate uh, against our uh, strong competitors. So this is uh, based on Samsung's unique DNA, innovative DNA made with several successes. Even though we didn't have any GSM solutions in the past, but now we have GSM. But anyhow, in LT era, so we have 21% of global LT users, they are serviced by Samsung infrastructure. And Samsung infrastructure team, we provided commercially up and running with uh, 125 thousand cell site, not cell site, radio cells. And then we recently got commercial contract with one of European nationwide UK deal. And two more European deal will be coming up by the end of this year. And we have largest TDLT deal in Asia. Also we have a large size of macro deals in Japan. So Samsung became uh, FDD a tier one global vendor as well as TDLT leadership. So naturally, we have a contract in the US, in Asia, as well as in Middle East. So Samsung has the largest sizable offer a commercial contract with our customers. So the combination of Samsung's most mature and differentiated innovation, and first with highly optimized services, and our global infra in Samsung, we treat customer as a king, and customer responsive DNA and dedicated partner for Samsung customer is unique in the marketplace. So this is end of my presentation. Thank you so much. IPU did a great job describing the portfolio of capabilities that Samsung has delivered to your customers. And we also know, as you showed in some of your slides, that Samsung is very strong on the device side as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how does being in both of those domains help you accomplish your goal of an end-to-end -end solution? Oh, that's a good question. Many people uh, prefer a Samsung Galaxy because many different types of, that's why Galaxy. <laughs> uh, well, Samsung infrastructure has the same DNA with all Samsung. As you know, Samsung Semiconductor, also Sam Samsung TV, and Samsung device, and Samsung infrastructure, all they have shared the same DNA under one CEO. That's why device and systems, they offer innovative, optimized, fast implementation for customers. However, most of the customers we commercially contracted, so they are separated, uh, separated deal between two different business units. So, I know also that in Korea, you are participating in the rollout of the first voiceover LTE. Yes. Uh, can you give us a sense of how that early experience has gone? And uh, what is the use case of, you showed us the quick switch to the HD video. Yes. And uh, HD voice, which mm -hmm. I think is different here because we're not using the same approach on HD voice uh, as part of the voiceover LTE here with uh, uh, Metro PCS. I did a uh, webinar with them. They're approaching it a little differently. But in Korea, you're using it more as a value-added service, right? Uh, because of our mobile operator, they charge the same amount of tariff from a voiceable LTE over 3G. So when they over the more uh, data, uh, more than five gigabyte or six gigabyte, and they charge more with the same amount of 3G voice core. So mobile operator, they introduce this voiceable LTE for their differentiated service, not just adding more uh, tariff from their end user's money come from. So, so far it's embedded in, in how many phones, how many devices are enabled? Uh, today in Korea there are four devices, but more than 90% of flagship model from each vendor in device. So all they support the voiceable LTE with high speed LTE embedded already. And does that require a change in the device, or is it just an application you download? If you buy the new stuff, you know, flagship model of devices, and then you just in software upgrade it through over the air, and then you can get voiceable LTE functionality. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. you don't have to pay anything. 
And in terms of the network side, what did they have to do to change their network to enable Voice over LTE? Voice over LTE, we provide the codec technology as well as optimization between uh, infrastructure and system. So infrastructure and device team, they are working in the same building uniquely, and then daily basis IoT. That's why implementation and optimization was done in only one month. We provide more than 99% of core success rate and less than 1% of core drop rate. So this is a great synergy impact between two business units. And what is the operator's objective? Is it to offer a new value-added service or to replace uh, CS fallback to allow them to refarm their 2G spectrum? Uh, that's a good question. Good question means uh, I'm in trouble to answer how to. Okay. So actually, uh, even though the nationwide deployment in LTE, but still voice over LTE is not working everywhere, every corner of the countries. That's why they still need a CS fallback. Already CS fallback was uh, implemented one year ago, and then quite well in uh, success rate, there are more than 98%. And then they are losing a few more percentage, one or two more uh, uh, percentage sacrifice with the CS fallback that's still okay. So end user, they are willing to have you know, CS fallback as well as voice over AT. And then also we provide you know, uh, SRVCC, single radio voice call continuity, so early next year. So all types of CS fallback and voice over LTE nationwide, and then SRVCC will be done with by Samsung. Fantastic. And uh, Samsung is also getting involved in small cells? Uh, Samsung is also a leader in small cell industry. But by the way, Berger, you made them more than three questions. I know, I do. I asked you too many questions. Does anybody okay. else have any questions and for And small IP? cell, let me talk about small okay, cell. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You can answer it then. And then Sprint, uh, they uh, uh, placed the order for us, a uh, small cell based station in LTE. And also KDDI in Japan, so appreciated their uh, decision to give us an opportunity to support macro and small cell based station together. Fantastic. Does anyone else have any questions for IP? You, the microphone is right there next to you. You have to get up. Oh, sorry, you have a laptop in your lap. You should have had a tablet, see? Hello, I have a small question. Uh, just Can to you make identify sure yourself, please? Uh, my name is Jewel Davenport. I work for TASC, a uh, government defense contracting company. Uh, so basically, just to re-clarify your statement, so you said that uh, Volte is working in certain areas of the country, but not the entire country, just trying to get an understanding. Uh, why not? Is it an infrastructure overlay? Is it software upgrade? And you mentioned that earlier as well. Is it simply a software upgrade? And what are the technical details that you guys added to, to implement Volte? Uh, our smart LT networks you know, improves uh, interference between cell edges. So most of the country, they were covered by VULT nationwide. However, I experienced by myself with my wife, and in the tunnel or very corner of, you know, in, in house and somewhere in, basis, in basement. So that place it cannot be covered by LTE yet. But more than 95% coverage or anywhere, anytime you can access VULTE, that's fine. But I still experiencing CS fallback in country. That's a reality. Well, I'll tell you, if, if our biggest challenge is uh, voice over LTE in the basement, I think we're okay. I thoroughly agree. <laughs> <laughs> Not in garage, metal. Maybe not in the garage. Anybody else have a question? I think that's pretty good coverage. If you can get it everywhere but the basement, that's, that's pretty good. Well, IP, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you so much.